Section 8 of The Adventures of Peter Cottontail by Thornton W. Burgess. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Jude Summers. Section 8. Unca Billy Possum Explains Things, Peter Rabbit Has a Bright Idea, and Peter Prepares for a Long Sleep. Chapter 22. Unca Billy Possum Explains Things. Peter Rabbit had sat still all day long in his safe hiding place in the middle of the dear old briar patch. Jolly round red Mr. Sun had gone to bed behind the purple hills, and the black shadows had raced out across the green meadows and into the green forest. Now the moonlight was driving them back a little way. Peter hopped out of the old briar patch into the moonlight and stretched first one leg and then another. Then he jumped up and down three or four times to get the kinks out of his long hind legs, and finally started off up the lone little path, lipperty-lipperty-lip. Halfway up the lone little path, Peter almost ran headlong into Unca Billy Possum. "'My goodness, Br'er Rabbit, y'all done give me a powerful start!' exclaimed Unca Billy. "'What y'all in such a right smart hurry for?' Peter Rabbit grinned as he stopped running. "'I didn't mean to frighten you, Uncle Billy. "'The fact is, I was on my way up to your house "'to see how you and old Mrs. Possum "'and all the children do this fine fall weather,' said Peter Rabbit. "'Uncle Billy Possum looked at Peter Rabbit sharply. "'Seems to me that y'all have taken a powerful sudden interest in we alls. "'I don't remember seeing you up our way for a long time, Br'er Rabbit,' said he. "'Peter looked a little foolish.' for it was true that he hadn't been near Unca Billy's hollow tree for a long time. "'You see, I've been very busy getting ready for winter,' said Peter, by way of an excuse. Unca Billy began to chuckle, and then to laugh. He rested both hands on his knees, and laughed and laughed. Peter Rabbit couldn't see anything to laugh at, and he began to get just a wee bit provoked. "'What's the joke?' he demanded. The very idea of Br'er Rabbit getting ready for winter, or of being busy about anything but other people's affairs, cried Unca Billy, wiping his eyes. Peter tried to feel and to look very angry, but he couldn't. No, sir, he couldn't. The very twinkle in Unca Billy Possum's eyes made Peter want to laugh, too. In fact, Peter just had to laugh. Finally, both stopped laughing. And Peter told Unca Billy all about the things that had troubled him. Johnny Chuck disappeared down in his house and said he would see me in the spring. What did he mean by that? asked Peter. Just what he said, replied Uncle Billy. He done gone down to his bed and gone to sleep, and he's going to stay asleep until next spring. Peter's eyes looked as if they would pop right out of his head. And Grandfather Frog, what has become of him? he asked. Oh, Grandfather Frog, he done gone to sleep, too, down in the mud at the bottom of the smiling pool. I reckon you'll see Grandfather Frog come up right pert in the spring, said Uncle Billy. And old Mr. Buzzard, he shouted down from the blue, blue sky that he would see me in the spring. Has he gone to sleep up there? asked Peter. Uncle Billy Possum threw his head back and laughed fit to kill himself. "'Bless your long ears, no, Br'er Rabbit. No, indeed. Oh, my, no. Br'er Buzzard done fly away down south to old Virginny to stay through the cold winter. And I most wish I was right along with him,' added Uncle Billy, suddenly growing sober. Then Peter Rabbit had a sudden thought. "'You aren't going to sleep all winter, are you, Uncle Billy?' he asked anxiously. The grin came back to Uncle Billy's face. "'No, Br'er Rabbit.' I reckons y'all can find me right in my hollow tree most any time this winter, if you're not loud enough. But I don't reckon on going out much, and I do reckon I'm going to have a right smart lot of sleep, replied Uncle Billy. Chapter 23 Peter Rabbit Has a Bright Idea Peter Rabbit had a bright idea. At least Peter thought it was, and he chuckled over it a great deal. The more he thought about it, the better it seemed. What was it? Why, to follow the plan of Johnny Chuck and Grandfather Frog to avoid the cold, stormy weather, 
by sleeping all winter. Yes, sir, that was Peter's bright idea. If Johnny Chuck can sleep and sleep the whole long stormy winter through, it ought to be, it seems to me, the very thing for me to do. Peter Rabbit said this to himself as he sat in the middle of the old briar patch, chewing the end of a straw. If Johnny Chuck could do it, of course he could do it. All he would have to do would be to find a snug warm house which nobody else was using, fix himself a comfortable bed, curl up, and go to sleep. Peter tried to picture himself sleeping away while the snow lay deep all over the green meadows, and the smiling pool could smile no more because the ice, the hard black ice, would not let it. Finally, Peter could sit still no longer. He just had to tell someone about his bright idea, and, and, well, he wasn't quite sure of just the way to go to sleep and sleep so long, for never in his life had Peter Rabbit slept more than a very, very short time, without waking to see that no danger was near. "'I'll just run up and see Uncle Billy Possum,' said Peter. Uncle Billy Possum was sitting in his doorway in his big hollow tree in the green forest when Peter Rabbit came hurrying up, lipperty-lipperty-lip. Peter hardly waited to say good morning before he began to tell Uncle Billy all about his bright idea. Uncle Billy listened gravely, although there was a twinkle in his eye. "'The first thing you must do is find a warm place to sleep, Br'er Rabbit,' said Uncle Billy. "'Oh, that's easy enough.' said Peter. And then you must get fat, Br'er Rabbit, continued Uncle Billy. What's that? exclaimed Peter Rabbit, looking very much puzzled. I say you must get fat, repeated Uncle Billy, slapping his own fat sides. What for? asked Peter. To keep you warm while you're asleep, replied Uncle Billy. Must I get very fat? Peter asked. Yes, sir, you must get very fat indeed, said Uncle Billy, and smiled, for it was hard to think of Peter Rabbit as very fat. How, how can I get fat? asked Peter, and looked just a little bit worried. By eatin' and eatin' and eatin', and between times sittin' still, replied Uncle Billy Possum. Well, that's easy, at least the eating is, said Peter, who, you know, thinks a great deal of his stomach. Is that all, Uncle Billy? Uh, that's about it, except you mustn't have anything on your mind when you try to go to sleep, Br'er Rabbit. You mustn't get to worrying for fear that Br'er Fox going to find you while you're asleep, said Uncle Billy, and grinned when Peter happened to turn his head. Peter thanked Uncle Billy and hurried back to the old briar patch to think over all that Uncle Billy had told him. I certainly will try it, said Peter. Chapter 14. Peter Prepares for a Long Sleep Day after day, Peter ran about this way and that way over the green meadows and through the green forest, as if he had something on his mind. Jimmy Skunk noticed it. So did Billy Mink and Bobby Coon. But Peter wouldn't stop to explain. Indeed, he was always in such a hurry that he wouldn't stop at all, but when he met them would shout, Hello! over his shoulder, and keep right on running, lipperty-lipperty-lip. Uncle Possum was the only one who guessed what it meant. Uncle Billy grinned as he watched Peter running about with such a serious and important air. Br'er Rabbit is trying dreadfully hard to fool himself. I reckon he's looking for a place to curl up and try to sleep all winter, said Uncle Billy. Uncle Billy had guessed just right. Peter was looking for a place to curl up to sleep all winter. Peter was too lazy to dig a new house for himself. Then it was too late in the fall anyway. He would just find some old deserted house that some of Jimmy Skunk's relatives or Johnny Chuck's relations had given up using. So Peter went poking into every old house he knew of, trying to find one that wasn't so tumbled down that it wouldn't do. At last he found one that he thought would be just the place, and Peter chuckled to himself as he planned on how he would curl up in the bedchamber, way down at the end of the long hall. "'No one will ever guess where I am,' he said to himself, and laughed out loud. Then 
Peter remembered that Uncle Billy Possum had told him that it was necessary to eat a great deal, so as to be very fat before going to sleep, for that was the way to keep warm all winter. So Peter started out to grow fat. This would be fun, the very best kind of fun, for there is nothing Peter Rabbit loves more than to fill his stomach, unless it is to satisfy his curiosity. Peter Rabbit's stomach is a thing that's most amazing. It takes so long to fill it up, his time is short for lazing. Perhaps this is the reason why, when Peter isn't eating, he wants to loaf around and watch other people work. Anyway, Peter is a tremendous eater, and now that he wanted to grow fat, he felt that he must eat more than ever. So he began at once to eat and eat and eat. But there was one very important thing that Peter had forgotten. He had quite forgotten that it was now late in the fall and the tender young green things which Peter dearly loves to eat were gone. He could no longer go down to the sweet clover patch and fill himself full to bursting. Farmer Brown had taken away all the cabbages and carrots and turnips that had made his garden so attractive to Peter. So now Peter had to hunt for what he had to eat. That meant a great deal of running about, and it is very hard work to grow fat when one runs about. The more Peter ate, the more he had to hunt for his food, and the more he had to hunt for his food, the more he had to run about, and the more he had to run about, the more he hurried and the faster he ran. Now, of course, running takes fat off. Oh, dear, cried Peter Rabbit. Getting fat is not as easy as I thought. End of Section 8